Hi everybody, uh, my name's Aileen and this is Rachel. Uh, we're from Grand Union Housing Group and we are going to be talking a little bit today about county lines and cuckooing. So, hello Rachel. Hello. Tell me a little bit about what you do at Grand Union. So I'm one of the uh, successful tenancies team leaders, but within that role, I also um, take the organisational lead for um, certain types of exploitation and specifically um, county lines and cuckooing. So what are county lines and cuckooing? Because I'm sure lots of us have heard those phrases, mm. but I don't know if anybody, if we all really know what they are. Um, so they're quite intrinsically linked, actually. Um, county lines is a quite a simple um, business model for um, drug dealing, and it involves a phone line being operated normally from a major city, um, taking orders for drugs into a more rural area. That's the typical county line. Um, it has transgressed and progressed over time and county lines can now run internally in different counties um, but it is it is that operation of a phone line taking an order for drugs into into um, a different area with county lines you have um, a practice called cuckooing um, there are various sorts of cuckooing but the most common type is a property being taken over specifically to exploit that individual for criminal purposes such as um, preparing drugs for distribution, um, storing drugs, storing weapons um, and with cuckooing comes um, a level of violence, a level of threat, coercive control um, and that normally will target the most very vulnerable people um, of society. So that's really really worrying isn't mm. it and I can remember watching Line of Duty, for example, mm. and seeing uh, somebody who had some vulnerabilities being cuckooed on there. And actually, I didn't understand that that's what it, it mm. was. So, Rachel, how do we recognise the signs of cuckooing and county lines? And what is it we can do about it? So one of the um, first things that we've done as an organisation is we've rolled out organisation-wide training um, to help colleagues and, and um, people that we work with recognise the signs of cuckooing and county line and set up a mechanism where that gets referred in to our team so that we can take that further and look into it. And that might be anything from a noise complaint, a complaint of heavy footfall to a property, um, paraphernalia in a property, um, even those conversations where you are just not confident that somebody is safe in their home, we've set up a mechanism where they're referred into our team and we can then go out and look into that a little bit more. Um, the problem of county lines and cuckooing isn't um, solvable by just us though. It's absolutely a multi-agency approach that will help tackle this problem. We must work in partnership with our colleagues in the police. We must work in partnership with our colleague at local authority, your adult services and children's services. Um, but we've also got some wonderful charities that do some exceptional work. Um, you know, in Bedfordshire, we've got the Bedfordshire Faru, who are super fantastic at supporting victims of exploitation. Um, we've got pathway to recovery. We've got other um, drug and addiction um, organisations that, that offer some superb support to people that are experiencing issues such as county line and cuckooing. And it is that multi-agency approach that helps eradicate that problem. Um, as, as a country, the problem is huge and it's going to take more than a multi-agency approach. But one by one, we can we can help those people that are being targeted. So I'm sure you've got loads of examples and you mentioned one by one. Why don't you talk about one of those now? Okay, um, one of my very favourite women that I've ever come across actually is, is a customer that, that we've helped here at Grand Union. She is absolutely inspirational. 
Um, I first met her after a colleague in adult services asked me to go and visit the customer with, with her. Um, and the backstory is she's been a Grand Union resident for quite some time and she was um, married with two children. Um, she was a victim of domestic abuse and to stop that she left the family home and was placed in another Grand Union property. But to help cope with what it was that she had been through, she did um, begin to use um, cannabis as, as a coping mechanism. But actually, for all intents and purposes, she was she was a great customer. The, the rent account was always up to date. There were never any complaints. Children's services and adult services were involved because she wanted um, to start to see her children again and they'd visited her and what they'd found was a customer about to use a class A substance which is when they contacted me and I went round to visit our customer and slowly but surely we built up a rapport with our customer and it transpired she was being cocooned she was being exploited and her property was being used um, to prepare class A drugs for distribution in the area that she was living and within that exploitation, she was being physically assaulted. She had been sexually assaulted. And the first time she had ever used Class A was when she was forcibly injected with Class A substances. So the minute we found this information out, with the help of colleagues in the IRT team and uh, the wellbeing services and our planners and customer contact and everybody, Within a couple of hours, we'd moved our customer out and placed her into a new temporary but safe address, completely out of area. We made some referrals to her to some local support services to help with the, with the addiction issue that she was now facing. We also sourced her an independent adv advocate through the local church of the area that she was living. We went to visit her weekly and slowly but surely, she began to build the confidence up to, to, to change her life. She gave a statement to the police about the individuals that were involved in exploiting her. And she worked really, really hard. We gifted her an um, iPad that was no longer in use so that she was able to join um, all the, the, the many, many meetings that she was asked to go to. Um, so she, she could do that through the iPad. Um, one of our colleagues in the community investment team put together a well-being pack for her with some activities to do, some, some of the calm drawings and bits and pieces. Um, we had the financial well-being team involved to help her sort out her um, finances on the, the two different properties that she had. We boarded up her, pr her, her previous property to keep the belongings that she had in there kept safe. Um, and then we worked with the housing team of a local authority to get her permanently relocated. And it took a little while, but we did get there and she was relocated in a new area. Um, and I stay in touch with this lady and she has been clean from Class A drugs since the day that we took her out of that property. She volunteers for a, a support service that help people that are suffering with addiction ill health. Um, and most importantly, she has shared care of her children. And it's an absolutely fantastic outcome where we played a small part in, in helping our customer get her life back. Wow, I mean, that's just, I mean, it's, it's what, what courage that that woman mm. has displayed. And it is that something, it is about that little bit of help. Mm because she's done that actually and it's, but it's it's our recognition that that's what that, that that's what was happening to her um, and the forcible injection of class A drugs is just horrific it's yeah. just it well it's all horrific but wow goodness so how how much of this are we dealing with how often does it happen um, unfortunately it is a growing problem it is absolutely a growing problem. Um, you know, off the top of my head, I know 
I need more digits than I have for cases that we have where we feel that there's exploitation through county lines or cocooing. Um, some of the meetings that I attend where we specifically talk about these things, um, there are in central Bedfordshire, for example, there are in excess of 40 cases wow. being looked at and not dissimilar figures in, in some of the other um, counties that, that we work within. Um, so the problem is huge and that num the number grows year on year. It really is um, a significant problem. But as a, as a social housing provider and as an organisation such as us, I think we're in a really good position to be able to, to play a key part in helping tackle those issues. So you've got massive experience in this. Uh, so what would be the messages that you would give to policymakers and government, for example, about what needs to happen on a bigger scale in order to tackle this? I think for me, one of the big things is resource. It's, it's resourcing um, all the different agencies that, that are trying to tackle these issues much more, you know, police, our mental health services, our statutory services that are there to help people, our, our drug charities. Let's resource them properly. Let's allow information to be shared that little bit more freely so that we can get the help need to the people that need it the most. And there's a tension between that, isn't there? Because there's mm. we have a whole load of stuff around the general data protection requirement compliance. Mm. And at the same time, um, being able to share information more freely would really help nip mm. this in the bud at an earlier stage, I'm, I'm guessing? Absolutely, and you know, working in the industry that we work in, you know, we're only gonna share information where it's absolutely needed and we, we're doing it with, for the best of intentions. So yeah, that freedom of information sharing just needs to be made that bit easier. Rachel, I think what you do is a completely um, heroic job um, and I sleep easy in my bed at night knowing that, that you and the team are there um, making sure all of our colleagues are well aware of all of these issues uh, and also helping support our customers in the way that you've described. Mm. Thank you, thank you very much for what you do. I'm really, really You're very welcome. grateful. You're welcome.